Hey there, Liegeverse. Welcome back to another Liegeverse Live. And we're so excited, as we're always excited, because Liege Matsumoto gets us excited, to talk today about what order should you watch Liegeverse anime in? And this is a question that I get all the time uh, from in comments, mostly in comments, uh, but in passing as well. A lot of people asking me, hey, how do I watch the Liegeverse? What order do I watch it in? Now, they're usually referring to a chronological order, and they want to know the series of events that dictate the Liegeverse, Liege Matsumoto's anime. But I got to break it to you, though. There, there's kind of a problem with the Liegeverse, and that's there is no order. I mean, you could see events taking place. They seem like they add right up, but you know, if you look at the years that are given, none of it ever seems to line up. So, so what's the real problem here? Well, it's not so much of a problem, but it's a it's a literary device that Liege Matsumoto used, and that's called Toki no Wa. Now, Toki no Wa is basically something Matsumoto used to explain repeating character designs. Okay, this is a problem that Asamu Tezuka also had to deal with, and he solved it with the star system, which has a bit of a sci-fi feel to it, but it's more about uh, actors or actresses. These are the stars of Asamu Tezuka's stories, and he consistently recasts them. Like, you know, Quentin Tarantino is always casting himself. Anyways, now, Toki no Wa is basically this theory where the universe is going on a cyclical uh, rhythm with variations in each cycle. Okay, these are kind of like parallel universes, but rather than suggesting, you know, time's a straight line with that in parallel, they're actually a ring. It cycles in on itself. It continues on and on. So... That in and of itself is, is kind of a cool concept. And it's, you know, what people complain about usually with Leiji Matsumoto's work is, oh, he uses the same character designs all the time, this, that. You got to remember, these are mangaka in the 70s. These are people that are revolutionizing the art. And these are people that are in such high demand that they're pumping out so much, like ungodly amounts of manga. It was just not possible to do the volume that they were being requested to do while you know, consistently over and over again, uh, making new character designs. Now, I would also argue that most anime characters nowadays all look the same too. Uh, and it's just about how varied the hairstyle gets. We, we always get a new hairstyle, but like DQ 11 pro tag be looking like trunks. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sit here and say that, that that's not the case because it is most of these productions occur in these different ring-like timelines. And their continuity, quote-unquote, errors, uh, they're really intentional. Uh, and sometimes there's third-party input that can make things a little wonky, but or just the continuity errors are just unimportant. They don't matter. We're talking about a sci-fantasy story here. You know, and that's what can bug people who are really, like, hard sci-fi fans about the Liegeverse, is that it's very soft. You know, the, the principles are based on reality still, but they're made fantastical. So if you wanted like a perfect timeline, like if you wanted to take the year of each anime and put them together, maybe you could do that too. And, and that would be a totally different video. Uh, but it doesn't dismiss an overarching narrative within the events of the Liegeverse itself. And that's maybe what I shouldn't have waited so long to get to. It's that there are events that transpire in the Liegeverse that can be connected subsequently, but the variations on the themes within those events are what throw people off. And I'm going to try and cut through that and ignore the contradiction and focus on what actually ties everything together. Uh, but I'm also going to give you guys two lists of how to watch the Liegeverse. I'm going to start out with the chronological one and... Warning, that might be a little bit more spoiler heavy because I have to connect everything with a story. I will give you guys a timestamp that you can skip right to the enjoyable order. And that's going to focus a lot more on, you know, things up front that are going to quickly hook you in. And then slowly, maybe the the mass appeal deteriorates throughout, at, throughout the list, but you're still going to be getting a lot of... You know, by the time you're that deep, by the time you've watched 
uh, at, up to a certain point where things get really questionable in this list, you're either going to be a Liegeverse fan or you're not. So you're either going to want to watch them or not. I'll at least give you the good stuff up front so that you don't get a wrong impression of the Liegeverse by jumping into something like Queen Melania the movie up front. Check out my review on that. So some disclaimers up front. Uh, I'll be ignoring to any reference to in-world uh, years, right? Due to Toki no Wa. Uh, I believe Galaxy Express... Uh, the first movie takes place in 2,221, and uh, Space Pirate Captain Harlock takes place in 2977, and you're going to see that doesn't really make sense with the chronological order that I propose, but ignore the year. The year doesn't matter. Uh, and we're only going to focus on Liegeverse proper. Uh, these... Uh, you know, there are things that could be can canonical, but they just don't fit in the timeline. Uh, you know, some of them even include Lazyverse characters like uh, Fireside's DNA, 999.9, uh, .9, which is a mouthful there. But it's just too incongruent for me to fit in. I mean, the Harlock appearance in that is like a, a few frames at the end. And uh, it's not really cohesive. And we're also going to be excluding Space Battleship Yamato. You know, that the ownership for that story is wrapped up in uh, rights ownership with Yoshinobu Nishizaki's rights holders. And, you know, because of that, Leiji Matsumoto had to pivot from that universe. And so there are things that line up with it. You know, in Yamato, Captain Harlock was actually supposed to appear. In fact, he does appear in the manga. But... It just doesn't fit in with the story I'm trying to tell. And we're also only going to be doing anime. Uh, manga is totally excluded. Critical universe-defining manga like Mirazer Bon, which is like the quintessential definition of Toki no Wa, comes from uh, Mirazer Bon. We're just going to ignore it, though, because I want people... This, this is for people who want to watch anime, all right? Uh, we're going to be excluding excessively obscure, rare, non-localized anime... Uh, the exception to that rule being Queen Melania, which is just too pivotal. Uh, pivotal. Technically, it does exist in English via the localized uh, Captain Harlock and the Queen of a Thousand Years. So, Nana Boo Boo. Uh, there's also like a ton of weird and obscure. There's like a Flash animation remake of Galaxy Express 3.9 that's a lot more like the manga. Uh, yeah, we're, we're not going to worry about that. We're not going to talk about that. It's not really available to English speakers very, very easily. And the enjoyable order, I want to preface that by, it is completely based on my uh, opinions and biases. I prefer dubs, uh, possibly due to a dyslexia. I haven't confirmed that, but I have a lot of things in my life that kind of <laughs> point to that. So, I like dubs more. Uh, it's not indicative of true objective quality. You know, we're not talking about animation quality here. We're not talking about any one thing. We're just talking about how... How I perceive the enjoyability as, a, as an arbiter of taste. Uh, I'm trying to identify the most gratifyingly unfolding path uh, in the enjoyability list. And I did make concessions uh, based on fan consensus here and there. So just because I think Cosmo Warrior Zero is better than a few other things on this list, I'm not going to change that. I'm, I'm going to push it down a little bit in the enjoyable order just because... Uh, I, I do hear what the fans say. I'm not completely ignorant, but there is bias in the list. And I tried to stagger movies with series so you don't get locked and bogged down in something uh, and maybe want to tune out, you know? Or you always have, like, a good out plan, like, all right, this series isn't doing it for me. Let's just pop in a movie real quick. So let's start out with that juicy chronological order. And so what I'm going to try and do while I describe the order of the Liegeverse is... Tell the story of the Liegeverse as it unfolds. Now, again, there is no true chronological order to the Liegeverse, but the, 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 the events that unfold are being referenced in a cyclical manner because of Toki Nawa, because of the Ring of Time. Let the story begin. So you might not have expected to see this in a Liegeverse proper uh, list, but I do begin the chronological order with Gun Frontier. This is the uh, one of the most formative manga to exist in the Liegeverse canon. I say it's proper canon. We have ancestral DNA here. This is Harlock and this is Totoro and uh, Shininora. Shinny, uh, we'll call her Shinny for a second. Uh, 
She's got she's got Maytel and Emeraldus vibes to her, right? This really establishes a trio that's going to be timeless in the Liegeverse. And it's a look back at the American West. Uh, I believe it's like early 19 or late 19th century, but I could be wrong. Uh, I don't I don't remember when people from Japan started coming to America. So that's a good question. But then we move right on. So you shouldn't be surprised. We just talked about Gun Frontier, which is that old Western story. We're talking about the cockpit now. Now, the cockpit, you might be saying, well, that's based in World War II. That's reality. Unfortunately, I have to argue with you because Lieji Matsumoto's representation of World War II is a fantastical one. There are made up names, locations, scenarios. There are references to real events, but those events are skewed in their retelling. Uh, whether that, whether or not that's the error of the writer or an intentional swap to fit it within the universe of Leiji Matsumoto, I'm gonna go with the latter. And you can clearly see some Harlock DNA. A lot of the pilots in the Battlefield and Cockpit series reference that Harlock character. And uh, there's a whole episode with something like an atomic bomb that you can reference uh, with regards to the cockpit. And you'll see that Harlock character design there. So after World War II, we go all the way to the distant future of 1999. That is when Queen Melania is based. Uh, that 3-9 motif ringing loud and true. Uh, even this created after Matsumoto wrote Galaxy Express 3-9. This is the beginning of the proper science fiction Liegeverse. Okay, we go to a world uh, in Queen Melania that is more technolo technologically advanced than our own in many ways, um, but, you know, 20 years ago. And we get this covert queen character. And this was being referenced a lot in the time at the time uh, throughout the late 70s, early 80s, this new age movement that encouraged people to believe that uh, <laughs> there was a, an alien emperor and alien leadership that there were aliens there was going to be a planetary merge right i'm not going to get too deep into how new age stuff works but basically the story of queen melania this this alien ruler who's ruled over earth for a thousand years it's time for her to make her swap but coincidentally her planet's swinging by and they just want to take over the earth all right so there's a big conflict there and Somehow, Earth wins. I don't know. This little boy, he shows up. He pilots an old plane. Somehow, there's ancestral DNA in this child to make him a warrior. And he joins forces with Queen Melania. And they win the day. Now, if you watch a series or anime, they end differently. The, the movie, uh, sorry, if you watch a series or movie, the movie ends at, in a way where it wouldn't, couldn't flow. But I guess the anime does better. And the manga definitely flows where it could lead to our next series after Queen Melania, Maytel Legend. So Maytel Legend, which is uh, an Akira Tsuburaya, Tsuburaya joint, uh, check out Mercury Falcon's video on him. Uh, it's, it's a bit maligned. There's a lot of people who aren't so into it, but we're not talking about enjoyability yet. We're talking about chronological order. And this story shows Maytel and Emeraldus as very young sisters, and they are the daughters of Queen Melania, who is back on La Maytel after her, her struggle to kind of stop her planet from becoming an invaders and oppressors of Earth. Maytel is watching her mother corrupt. And so we see this hero in the last story become corrupted, and her daughters have to rise up and, and combat this mechanization process that Queen Melania has been sold by uh, bad actors, universal bad actors. Uh, they win their battle here, but ultimately they go on to Space Symphony Maytel, which is the sequel. And we also see Maytel here, Maytel in the white outfit in Maytel Legend, and she moves on to this red, fiery, May tell. And she's taken on a position of royal responsibility. Her sister has formerly rejected it. Uh, and so Maytel's kind of absorbed back into the family and Emeraldus is kicked out. But we do see a, a young boy, Nazca, join up with Maytel. And so it's one of the first young boys that she has an interaction with um, ab aboard the Galaxy Express 39. And they have kind of a very fiery, passionate conflict. And that leads us to a war against the earth and 
the war against the Earth in the Liegeverse is never really super well uh, detailed, this machine man war. Okay, we get glimpses of what the war against the Earth looks like in Space Pirate Captain Harlock, and we see the tail end of it in Arcadia of My Youth, but we rarely see uh, this full-on destruction of Earth happen. We, we get the post, and this is Cosmo Warrior Zero, where we get our first... Uh, actually, we don't get our first. Uh, young Harlock does show up in Space Symphony Made Tell. But after this war, though, Young Harlock is a bit more grizzled. He's got an axe to grind. We also find Cosmo Warrior Zero, uh, or Warrior Zero, the main character here, who may or may not resemble a figure very important later on that we'll find out, uh, mainly tied to a locket that Warriors Zero has. They have uh, their conflict here, and that leads us to another post-war uh, expression of, of Captain Harlock. Now we, we saw that young Harlock had both of his eyes. Well, in Arcadia of My Youth, we do learn why one of Captain Harlock's eyes is missing. And what we see here is another, after the Battle of uh, Earth has been waged, Harlock has to submit. And through this submission, he rejects further work. He rejects becoming a pilot for the invaders of Earth. But through that, uh, he loses a love and he loses his eye. But he meets, he, he loses those two things, but he replaces them with two other incredibly important figures, Totoro Oyama and Queen Emeraldus, or just Emeraldus, who flies the Queen Emeraldus. And so we have these uh, three characters finally forming up and meeting. Now, we saw it in Cosmo Rear Zero, right? And we, I think we see it in Space Symphony Main Tell. These are things that we're just going to have to ignore for now, okay? I'm trying to give you something that's, that's roughly going to approximate, okay? So, like I said, things are a little out of order here, but this is the best I can surmise. Immediately, this is the direct sequel to Arcadia of My Youth. The Endless Orbit SSX series was supposed to get like 45 episodes, ended up being like 24 or something like that. Kind of a tragedy, but uh, an excellent series. But this is where we actually find the first major death, but we're going to have to ignore that major death here, or we're going to have to tie it into the events of something else that happens. And uh, this story isn't too integral in how the Liegeverse plays out on the whole, especially because they find like a paradise within it. Captain Harlock stories can kind of be more disjointed. Like basically we're trying to meld Captain Harlock and Galaxy Express 3-9 here. And so we get another one here, after SSX, since that's the direct sequel, I put in Harlock Saga here. Now, again, we have to ignore some deaths. Um, and But we, one could imagine that maybe intermittent throughout the Endless Orbit SSX story, or maybe maybe this even happens between Arcadia My Youth and SSX, but it's hard to reconcile without the back-to-back. -back. But we still have the three here, okay? And, and they go on yet another superfluous adventure. They're just doing Ring of the Nibelheim. They're just having fun. This is just good old fun Captain Harlock. And maybe, you know what, I realize now, maybe this should go in between Arcadia My Youth and SSX. Uh, but this is also amorphous that really, you know, tell whatever story you want. <laughs> but then we have really the disillusion. And this is why I, I put uh, Harlock Saga and SSX before this is because Queen Emeraldus is a story that reckons with the fact that Emeraldus once knew Harlock and Totoro and she's out of touch and she's actually searching for Totoro throughout this. So in some way, shape or form, he has become lost. This is an incomplete story. The OVA only has four episodes, uh, but it's a quick little jaunt and we see Emeraldus kind of on her own and something has dissipated the relationship uh, of the three. And maybe that's sold more in the Harlock Saga uh, mangas. I'm not sure. Uh, but then we go to one of the biggest classics, Galaxy Express 3-9. Um, Harlock and Emeraldus uh, and Totoro are still kind of disparate in this, They, but they are all still wanted. So, uh, you know, they, they no longer hang out together as, uh, you know, all on the same ship all the time, but uh, and they've all kind of living their separate lives now by the time Galaxy Express happens. Um, and this is another kind of post-war 
Uh, you know, I like to kind of imagine that the war that that the Earth in the Liegeverse is just constantly alien invaded. And to be fair, if we had an intergalactic society, I feel like a lot of alien species would just look at Earth as, you know, easy pickings, so to speak. But at the end of this, we have the proper death. All right, we've already had Totoro Yama die like three times so far. But this, I count as the uh, canonical death of Totoro because partially because it's the most imposing version. It's the most complete version of Totoro's death, right? We've kind of played around with the idea beforehand in the Liege verse that Totoro dies, but this expression, uh, I especially like the fact that he's not with his friends in this. Like there's been a true separation and, uh, you know, he's not an eternal liver <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna go down and and tetsuro ends up taking the proper mantle after that um and of course we get maytel kind of weaving back into the story she was kind of with us in the blue outfit she's sad about the war she probably caused in cosmo warrior zero but now she's she's making her uh, formal appearance here. Uh, she was in Harlock Saga before, so she's probably out there doing creepy stuff, but she's here in full force. We're going to get to know Maytel. We're going to get to know everything about her in this one and her relationship, however creepy it may be, with Tetsuro. And then we have a complete non sequitur, but I think it only fits in here, the Galaxy Railways, which is not unrelated to the Liege verse at all the main character is actually i believe the nephew of k yuki who appears who's already appeared in uh ssx but uh maybe a little less uh canonical there too because because that would mean you know it's like we have to ignore some things right but let's go through this main throughway because throughout the galaxy railways there's an ova where maytel and Tetsuro join the Galaxy Railways on an adventure, uh, the SDF or EDF, I forget which one they are, uh, Defense Force, Earth or Space. And so throughout this uh, adventure they have, they meet Maytel and Tetsuro. They were supposed to meet Harlock. They were supposed to meet Kei Yuki throughout all this, but it just didn't happen. And this is just a fun uh, military drama that the Liegeverse hadn't gotten for a while when this was made. I really like the Galaxy Railways, to be perfectly frank, and, and it'll pull at your heartstrings. So give it a watch. I'd suggest it. So nothing really too critical in the Liegeverse happens there, but we do get a really good look at how uh, the space train uh, fleet works in this year in this universe and then we move on to the first iteration of space pirate captain harlock in 1977 uh, we get this really wonderful anime well what we see here and why this fits in in this particular space is that emeraldus is no longer really in the picture you know she makes an appearance in this show in a flashback but she's chasing her dead husband who's died in the past in this episode so it makes sense to follow up galaxy uh express with space pirate captain harlock we get a new form of uh of enemy and actually in galaxy railways they have like a plant-based enemy that they end up facing off against so you can see that they were maybe trying to tie in you know maybe there was a progenitor to the mazone Maybe, maybe these are progenitors to the Mazone that are fighting in Galaxy Railways, and then the Mazone properly appear in Space Pirate Captain Harlock. Uh, and we also see uh, Tetsuro, maybe the... And I don't like to think of Tetsuro and Daiba and Hoshina, Hoshino and, and all these different boys. They're just the boy. <laughs> like, just a, they're just the boy. Don't worry about that. The Queen Millennia boy is long dead by this point. This is like a thousand years in the future or something like that. Um, but this is the new boy. The new boy has grown up a little bit and he's got on the ship with Captain Harlock. That's why I like to imagine Tetsuro is just a little bit more grown up and he's hopped on with Captain Harlock. Uh, but never mind, screw that, because we're doing Galaxy, uh, a do Galaxy Express 3 9 at this point. Tetsuro and Maytel have kind of split. Uh, they couldn't have split during Galaxy Railways, right? They're still together. So they split up actually before Space Pirate Captain Harlock occurs. Then Space Pirate Captain Harlock occurs, and then we get to do Galaxy Express. And you can imagine maybe the invasion of Earth, uh, swap the Mazone for Sheen Man again. It's another big attack. I think 
Space Pirate Captain Harlock and and uh, Cosmo Warrior Zero both mark two big like invasions of Earth, and either one is by Machine Man or Mazone. And the Machine Men come and they wreck Earth. And Tetsuro is back in the slums where he started off. Um, and he meets up with Maytel again. And we meet this whole new cast of characters. And at the end, we have Tetsuro facing off against his father, Darth Vader. I mean, Faust. And Faust, I should know more about the Faust character, actually. Uh, some philosoph uh, philosophy implications there, I think. Or literature of some sort. And Faust actually also has a locket, and that locket of a wife and child, hearkening back to Warrior Zero and Cosmo Warrior Zero. There's a good chance that this man is the same man as Warrior Zero. So we see how this man has grown older, and this man actually has fought with Captain Harlock. They share a, a glass at the end, and uh, he's been corrupted. It seems, it would seem. So it's very, it's a very, you know, complicated scene. You wonder why is Harlock cheersing this horrific enemy? Well, maybe there's something going on here. And then we have the comeback immediately after that, the proper third film as it was billed, uh, Eternal Fantasy, where Tetsuro and, uh, Tetsuro's had another break from Maytel and she comes back in. Uh, we meet Hail Mazier, and this is actually the sister of another character, another antagonist in Cosmo Warrior Zero. So it's interesting that we see these Cosmo Warrior Zero related figures have sort of parallel or old versions in the past and sort of grow or change and be new here. You, you might even think if it was that, maybe they're not sisters. They're, you know, it's, it's already been established in the proper novels, though. So skip all that. Uh, this is a lot of rambling, but after that, we have Space Pirate Captain Harlock, Endless Odyssey, which is Rintaro's uh, renewed work of Harlockian anime. Anyways, ignore that, what I just said there. And as you can see in Space Pirate Captain Harlock, Kei Yuki has grown up a lot. She's kind of independent in that way, ru running her own operation. Uh, if if this this is supposed to happen immediately or, or s directly subsequently to the original Space Pirate Captain Harlock. And at the end of that, uh, Harlock basically dumps everybody else on Earth and says, hey, I'm peacing out. But here he has, he has rejoined the crew. There's a new threat. They're called the new. So it's a new threat. And go figure. We see basically just a much darker, much angrier Captain Harlock here. He's much more prone to just murder his enemy, <laughs> um, unlike the original Harlock that we saw. And, you know, this kind of does end with him just like telling a boy to shoot him. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I don't know what happened there, but it ended up that eventually Harlock can't be killed. He can't figure out how to get killed. Even when he asks people to try and kill him, he can't get killed. He accidentally spills some black matter or whatever, dark matter on himself. Oh, guess what? Now you're, now you're actually immortal. And so what happens? He just hates his life to the point where he tries to end everybody's. He's corrupted Captain Harlock. Nobody likes it. So that's the Liegeverse. And that's the whole tale. So we basically go from... Old West Cowboy to Immortal Space Pirate Man who wants to destroy the world. And, you know, I think that's a pretty natural progression. Now, that was the chronological order of the Liegeverse. But let's talk now about what's the most enjoyable way to watch this thing, man. And I think that's way more important. I think this is an order that you should probably look to um, if you're trying to get into the Liegeverse. But if you're already in the Liegeverse, then you might actually get a kick out of watching the chronological order I just proposed. Okay, so let's just talk about it. It's pretty simple freaking concept. Galaxy Express 3.9, the first movie is absolutely incredible. It is the best Liege Matsumoto work that has ever been created. That's my opinion. I'm sticking to it though. Rintaro's breakthrough work really defines his entire career. Uh, Liege Matsumoto dominating theaters, making such a huge lasting impact uh, on, J on Japan really only, unfortunately. I mean, that's one of the biggest 
downfalls of the lazy versus the galaxy express 39 it was just a little too weird and it was just weird enough for japan but just a little too weird for well i would say distributors rather than audiences but uh, Queen Emeraldus, though, another great place to go in. This is an, a suggestion based on uh, Julian Peru, who also, also has been on Lazyverse many times uh, and the Free Arcadia podcast. But he suggests this. It's excellently animated. You get to see Queen Emeraldus do some awesome stuff. Her, her They've given her... Uh, blimp her space blimp a, a pink laser cannon it's worth it's worth it just to see that fight and she destroys one man with it that's that's a little uh, cell i have back there um arcadia my youth i would say this isn't the third best leiji matsumoto anime but it does it does require initial watching to understand what comes after it endless orbit ssx and i think this is the best anime series featuring Captain Harlock. Probably though, because it really focuses on my favorite character, Totoro Oyama, the Jesus of the Liegeverse, who is who is who is uh, oppressed into death and then rises again as the Arcadia. It's a great story. Uh, the cockpit. Honestly, if you like World War II, if you like old weaponry, if you have the same uh, tech like old tech fetish that Liege Matsumoto has, this might be your number one. Maybe you should start with the cockpit to be perfectly honest with you. But uh, either way, I think you're going to enjoy the cockpit here. Uh, it's three great stories and they're all very heart touching and relatable. You know, this is probably the most relatable thing anybody can watch in the Liege verse, especially because a lot of us had grandparents that were in World War II. So we may be more interested in the topic. Uh, then Galaxy Express 39, the series. I have not watched the entire series yet, but I know it's a good romp. Um, I wanted to, you know, get you back onto a series. Like I said, I tried to do movie series, movie series. I think that at 113 episodes, you might not be able to binge watch the entire thing. So I would say just go in between the Galaxy Express series. Check out a do Galaxy Express and get a little bit more of that Rintaro high that you've been chasing uh, since you first watched Galaxy Express 39. And it's obviously not as good. Most sequels aren't, but I think it's definitely passable and you get a nice kind of ending to the story of Tessero Maytel, which isn't as nice in the original. And, you know, I don't know about the series. Then after you've, you know, if you've gotten through Galaxy Express 39, the series and the movies, the Galaxy Railways is a great follow-up. Maybe you're space trained out, okay, and, and maybe you should watch the thing after that instead. But I think in terms of quality, The Galaxy Railways is a fantastic series. It's wonderfully animated. It's deeply touching and emotional if you get to know the characters. It's not as modern and as I think some people wish it was. It's still got a lot of Showa heart to it, a lot of old school, golden age emotion, but that's what I love about the Liegeverse. So, you know, even though it's not made for the older people that it should maybe appeal to, um, I kind of like that about it because it's a little bit more earnest. Then hop right into Space Pirate Captain Harlock. Uh, it's not a super long series. If you struggle with dubs, you're going to struggle with this because, or you, if you struggle with subs, you're going to struggle with this because the dubs are bad or non-existent um or amalgamations like i said queen millennia and the queen of, uh captain harlock and the queen of 1000 years is the mashup anime that harmony gold made it's not good it's a bad time watch the original uh it, it's worth it to get to the end even if you struggle through subs like i do galaxy express 39 eternal fantasy is wonderfully animated i think it's one of the best animated things in the 20th century uh the best animated movie from uh, in the liegeverse in the 20th century i think that's uh accurate and it's a fun time it ends a little inconclusively so it kind of this was supposed to be another uh anime series reboot okay they were supposed to make more cartoon episodes after this but they didn't I, i'm guessing they didn't make their money back um it's kind of a, it's sad, but, but true. Uh, 
This might actually be able to go before Eternal Fantasy, but I wanted to give you a movie because I just made you sit through uh, Space Pirate Captain Harlock and the Galaxy Railways. Now you go to Eternal Fantasy, then Space Pirate Captain Harlock, Endless Odyssey. It is a fun romp. Liaji Matsumoto does not really, this is not canon Harlock, and the same goes for 3D Harlock. Uh, there were some controversies when this was being made that kind of spoiled things a bit, but I think this is a wonderful representation of a grittier Harlock that I know a lot of fans have been after. Um, and so here you go. Then, I don't know anything about this, but check out the Queen Melania series. I don't know. Go watch it. I still need to watch it. I'm sorry. But I've heard it's better quality. Um, it's not sub, so I'm not going to put it before uh, some of the other... It's not dubbed, so I'm not going to put it before some of the other things, and I definitely don't know as much about it. But I hear it's a good romp. It's a fun romp. Maybe if you if you don't mind subs, you watch this even before... Uh, you might watch this between uh, ga like Galaxy Railway or maybe after Space Pirate Captain Harlock you watch this or uh, maybe Eternal Fantasy. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you can move it up, but it's a fun, fun magical girl story, though I think towards the end it starts to meander really bad, which is a problem that the movie has. But anyways, I put it before Gun Frontier because I know Gun Frontier gets a lot of smack talk. I love Gun Frontier. I'd probably push Gun Frontier up to above Space Pirate Captain Harlock. I, that's what I would do. But... It gets a lot of hate. It can be a little questionable in the materials for some people. So Gun Frontier, I stick towards the back, but I think it's a fun Western story and it's definitely worth a watch. And it highlights Totoro Yama, this little guy falling off the, off the train down there. I think you should all fall in love with Totoro Yama. Uh, after that, we got Maytel Legend. It is not well animated. It's a Akira Tsuburaya joint, but you're going to get that juicy, like, in between Queen Melania and Galaxy Express info that I was talking about before. And then it's worth watching Space Symphony Maytel after that because, and it's another situation where this Space, Space Symphony Maytel is better than Maytel Legend, but Maytel Legend is like two, is it? I can't remember if it's like two or four episode OVA. Um, so it's not really a big investment. This is a bigger investment. It's a better story, but you want this to set you up for this. Like some chronological order I do respect because it, when it exists in the Lazy verse, I try to have people say, hey, watch the first one first. You'll at least know what the hell's going on. And you can make fun of it too. You're allowed to make fun of things that you like. Uh, Cosmo Warrior Zero, I would probably put this before uh, the Queen Melania series, but it's really maligned because of its bad animation. Like I said, Akira Tsuburaya, he worked on this. Um, and there's some other, but but the script, I think, is absolutely wonderful. The pacing can be a little weird, but honestly, you know, I don't know. I just really enjoy the story of Cosmo Warrior Zero, and I've actually watched it more than I've watched anything else, at least in times of, like, pure hours watched in the Liege verse. After that, we got Harlock Saga, another one that I would bump up. I would probably bump this above the Queen Melania series as well, but... It gets a lot of hate because it does drag. The pacing is very bad in this one. As far as uh, animated series in the 20th century go, this might be the best. No, 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 no. That's Queen. Uh, yes. Queen Millennia OVA, I think, came out. Ooh, is that 99 or 2000? Anyways, it's, it's close. It's really good. It's really well animated. I like the story, but the reality is that it's told so slowly that most people just hate it. Um, and that's fair. You know, but I think the action scenes in it are worth your time. Then, one of, it, this is more maligned than Harlock Saga. Space Pirate Captain Harlock 3D. A lot of people don't like watching Captain Harlock become corrupted. They want him to be the perfected eternal champion. They want him to be dad, <laughs> space dad. Uh, and it's just, but I think it makes sense in the context they present it because He's so powerful, nothing can ever take him out. He accidentally gets immortality in this, and well, what else would you do in that? I mean, beyond killing yourself, and who knows if he can even do that at this point. I doubt he can. Uh, and he just ends up trying to destroy the universe. But the boy, the boy changes things, and and you'll you'll see that. But this is just ah, yeah. Oh my 
God, oh, I can't even. Oh, oh Queen Melania, the movie. Why don't, I, don't watch this one. Don't watch. All right, watch it. But I'm going to tell you this, okay? This is the most boring Liegeverse movie I've ever seen in my life. Every moment, you think Harlock Saga is slow? This, this, when you watch, when you watch two planets touch their little, little freaking space bridge uh, auras together, and it takes five minutes to happen, you'll watch this movie and, and, and curse the day. Watch my review for all the hot takes. You also, you know, get it defended for its soundtrack and this and that. No, no. Save this for last because if you want to be disappointed, this is what you watch. This is the one you watch. The manga's great. The manga's a totally different list. I think maybe that's what I was talking about in the beginning too. The manga is a completely different list, um, but yeah. So that's it. Thanks so much for watching the chronological order and enjoyable order of the Liegeverse. I hope you learned something today. Post your angry comments about why I shouldn't have tried to put this anime, uh, these animes into a subsequent list. Tell me why I'm the worst anime uh, uh, fan content creator uh, of all time. Tell me in the comments, I wanna know why you hate this list. Or if you found this list useful, hit that like, give Liegeverse a sub. We're coming out with new episodes of the Free Arcadia podcast. I've got more presentations like this lined up. I wanna do more and more of this stuff. So please show your support. And uh, I don't know, that's it.